Hello. This is section 12 where we're going to talk about the occupation of states. So this is of course driven by our desire to understand electron flow in these devices. And um, as I had shown in the past, we had looked at the number of uh, electrons per atom. We studied the number of atoms per volume in a crystal structure. And the argument here is that the number of electrons per are available for conduction is still very different. So we studied the underlying physics of uh, materials and crystal structures, but we still need to understand within the quantum mechanical model band structure that we calculated. We calculated equi-energy surfaces, and we calculated something called the number of states in the system. So from the number of states, we now can uh, represent them with discrete um, a number of states. We can imagine this is kind of like an, an inverted high, uh, a sky rise, skyscraper, I'm sorry. Um, and now the ch uh, challenge is, is how to place all these electrons into this skyscraper or how to populate these uh, apartments with people. So uh, in this section, we'll study how the occupancy statistics are being managed and computed. So not only um, uh, will we use uh, the uh, number of states that are available, but we will calculate the filling factor. So that's really the uh, occupation factors, and we'll do this, this with equilibrium statistical mechanics. All right. So that being said, we can then drive towards uh, transport and uh, velocity of particles, etc. But the first step before we can go there is really understanding the equilibrium occupation factors, and eventually we'll end up at real devices. All right. So in the previous section, we calculated band structure. So this picture, pictogram is really familiar with you. And in the first section now, I'm going to talk about the rules of filling of these electronic states. And then we'll uh, go into the Fermi-Dirac statistics and some calculation of intrinsic carrier concentrations. All right. So let's look at this EK diagram and the electronic states. Um, of course, you've seen the density of states already, where we've calculated that for the conduction and the valence bands, uh, these states go as a square root of E for three dimensions. For now, we're going to check uh, the valence bands. I'm going to just look at the uh, conduction bands. All right. So conduction bands, density of states goes as square root of E, as indicated here, with a prefactor that depends on the effective mass of the system. All right. So, uh, nothing new there, but now we're going to look at these density of states as some discrete states that we need to fill. And just for argument's sake, we're going to consider three energy levels, where the lowest one is here close to the band edge, and we'll consider three discrete energy levels that might have a variety of states available. So, let's uh, just set the rules uh, uh, to start with. So. The Pauli exclusion principle demands that there's only one electron per state. If we consider spin, there's going to be a spin up state and a spin down state at a given energy. So right now we're not going to talk about spins explicitly, but you could imagine them being included in these discrete representations. All right, we're also going to conserve the total number of electrons in the system. So we're going to set the demand that the total number of electrons sums over all the electrons that are in the various states i. So we're going to consider a number of states. In this pictogram here, we're going to uh, consider three energy levels, but they have individual states associated with them. And finally, the total energy of the system needs to be uh, conserved. That means for a given occupancy and uh, an energy level, we're going to sum up the total energy in the system, and that needs to be conserved. All right. So that gets us um, uh, to the fundamentals. These are setting the rules of how we're going to calculate now uh, the Fermi-Dirac statistics in the next segment. So thank you very much.